Yeah, she, well, she got the 2024 Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics, mathematics. and Science Teaching. Yes. Yeah, so that was exciting. But, but we've had so many awards, and many of our award winners are right now in many Minnesota, Minneapolis. Yeah, they're, they're back now, but they oh, were over break. You're right. Okay, so we just all kinds of awards. You can't even Definitely. recognize all of bringing, them. Bringing home the awards yeah. is true. Hi. Um, Hi. I want to agree with everybody. Uh, the <laughs> Teacher of the Year Award was good. I actually got to see all three plays. So My Fair Lady, Beauty and the Beast, and Shrek. They were awesome. Teachers and support staff did great. And I can't wait to say for these performers, I knew them when they went to school in <laughs> Queen Anne's County. All right. Welcome back from spring break. Yes. Hopefully everybody got some break time. Did you guys have a good time with spring break? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Who would like to have Mr. Sendiford? Would you like to start? Uh, sure. No, no, no. Well, Pardon? Did yeah. I miss? The student board members and superintendent. That's, that's yeah. right. That would that's be who Mr. we just yeah. That would be Mr. Sandiford. Oh, Lastly, our state testing begins next week and will continue periodically throughout the rest of the school year. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Forty. Um, good evening, everyone. So this week, our prom tickets are being distributed. Me and my fellow class officers have been hard at work fundraising for our class, and as a result, our principal has decided to allow us to have free prom tickets. Um, on April 11th, any senior interested in attending Chesapeake College in the fall should sign up for an 8.30 a.m. interest meeting on Naviance, and any sophomore or junior interested in taking classes at Chesapeake in the fall for dual enrollment should sign up on Naviance for the interest meeting at 9.30 a.m., and this meeting will be held in the cafeteria. On April 12th, the Career Center has organized a field trip to the Marine Trades Career Fair for all interested, and also for the second time this year, eligible students will be able to take their learner's permit tests at QA. On April 15th, students who plan on continuing their athletic career in college will have their signing day at 8 a.m. in the Queen Anne's lobby. On April 17th, the guidance department is hosting a college planning trip to Salisbury University where interested students can tour the campus. And on the 19th, the Career Center is hosting a field trip to PRS Guitars in Stevensville. And on from April 22nd through the 26th, we'll be having our Senior Class Spirit Week, and we'll be ending with our Senior Prom on Saturday the 27th at Prospect Bay Country Club. On the 23rd, our Art Honor Society is also hosting their annual Queen Anne's County High School art scene at 5 p.m. And our talented elementary, middle, and high school students will be able to showcase their greatest works of art, and this event will be located in the Queen Anne's County High School lobby. On the 29th, Chesapeake College will be at Queen Anne's County High School from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. for registration for the 2024 fall semester. And all students need to have completed dual enrollment registration form, to need to have a completed dual enrollment registration form. And any current 10th or 11th grade student with a 2.5 GPA is eligible to take a college class. And on the 30th, Inductions will be held for the Math, Science, English, Computer Science, and Tech Honor Society starting at 6 p.m. in the Queen Anne's County High School Auditorium. All right, that's that was all. That was Thank fine. you. We um, we have a little bit of technical difficulties, I think, so we're going to take a break real quick. Um, we are working now. Oh, we're working now. Okay. We're gonna, okay. All right. Great. I don't have any audio. Hold on one second. You're saying you're not seeing hearing the audio. The only thing that's down right now is YouTube, and I'm working on connecting it. But okay. Facebook should be live, and Telview should be okay. Okay, then okay. we're fine. Great, thank Everyone's you. audio was out, so I had to restart the TriCaster. Okay, all right, thank all right. you. Right. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so I um, ditto everything that the board um, said, uh, amazing opportunities to go to, but this, this morning I started my day at Ag Day um, at the 4-H <coughs> Park with our seventh grade students, um, and it was an, a, amazing. Every, every single year they just outdo themselves. Um, I know they're going to come to you with a presentation, maybe in a month, a month and a half or whatever it is. Um, so I don't want to totally steal their thunder, but I will say that they've tweeted, tweeted it, tweaked it a little bit more. They added a career fair this year. It was amazing and awesome. And I brought each one of you little gifts. I brought you a chicken tattoo that's in Maryland. <laughs> Right. And a sticker too. We're gonna wear so, it proudly. Yes. At least I will. So I can't these, speak for the Mr. Tattoos, Smith. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're awesome. The kids love them. <laughs> the kids love them. So I'm gonna pass your your gifts out to you. Yeah. 
and thank actually Mr. Thank Page you. is in the audience and thank him personally for his leadership with that because um, without him that would not be possible for our district. Uh, thank you. I know it's always it's a highlight for me when they come in and present the egg. The yes. Egg, the kids it and, is the, definitely. and the awards. And yeah. Is that everybody? All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, it's time for citizen participation. We ask that all speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. <clears throat> Excuse me. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone numbers and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have any specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. First on the list, Richard McNeil. I, <laughs> I know you, and then you got it. <laughs> 259. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard McNeil, and, and uh, I'm here tonight just to make a, a couple of positive comments, I hope. And one, I want to thank Dr. Salins for joining us for lunch at our meeting, and it's always great to, to see her there. And, you know, even though we're retired, we're still part of the family. At least we think that way anyway and, and so forth. And uh, as the year goes on and, and some of the staff is thinking about retiring, I, I hope that we can continue to... Uh, work with uh, uh, HR to uh, invite them into our organization and so forth. And we just like to keep everybody informed in terms of our pension and what's going on in the state legislature about that. And with the month of March and the, and the gala, you know, where we're honoring uh, staff people. And, you know, if you think about it, Queen Anne's County has quality folks. Not all perfect, but they're quality. And, and you know, we, we appreciate that. And I just read something where teaching is like sailing in uncharted waters. And if you're the captain of a, of a boat and you're going through some uncharted waters, you, that could be kind of unnerving. And teachers every day have to put, you know, see their students who come with a potential of an emotional upheaval. They don't know what went on before that child got on the bus. None of us do. And yet here they are, they meet them at the door to educate them and teach them with all the burdens that, that each individual child comes. And that's every single day, 180 days. And fortunately we have good folks too who are out there doing that. Um, I also would like to recognize the teacher at Graysonville, I think her name is Lisa, uh, for the presidential award. Um, that doesn't come easy. And, you know, that, that shows quality again for her and what she's doing in that school. Um, for us in the retirement group, we have our scholarship applications coming in. We will be um, evaluating those in another couple of weeks. So anybody listening, if you're still out there, you still have a little bit of time to get those in. And uh, we look forward to celebrating those individual students at our June meeting. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That is it. Okay. That's easy. All right. Well, as our amended uh, agenda. agenda, yes, we've got the 8.02, which we'll talk, which is Mr. Schreckengost. And, and, and Mr. Page. Oh, okay. is it? Okay. Mr. Page is coming up as well. Okay. And then you have Dr. Noel coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's coming. Okay. Thank you. Mm. We come before you tonight with a proposed ratification of the uh, agreement between the Board of Education and the Queen Anne's County Public School A and S team. So I want to thank uh, <coughs> Michael and John for their hard work. We have a we have a good agreement. I think. Uh, a lot of kudos go out to them and their team for working hard to get this done. So thank you very much. 
I, I mean, we agree with that. We thank you and we thank you once again. Uh, we working together, uh, we continue to craft a, a great contract and we are very, very appreciative. So thank you. Thank you. Any comments, questions? I just say we appreciate what you all do. Mm -hmm, it's, it's a tough job. It's a lot of, a lot of responsibility. Yes. All right. Well, can I get a motion? Make a motion that we accept the ratification of ANS contract. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Up to this side too. All right. I don't have any. Who is doing the Boys and Girls Club? So um, they are. The, the representatives okay. from the Boys and Girls okay. Club and um, also from Four Points. So these are after school. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, yeah, I just didn't know if we, any of our, none of our representatives. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a presentation back to our we're going to go back to our informational items now and we have a presentation on the boys and girls club and the four points is that correct yep i was going to say gentlemen if you want to bring just one more chair up oh, yeah. they're, gonna oh, they're going to do two separate yeah i'll go after them oh. mine's, mine's this big okay. i was hopeful you guys would be together Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair Bennett and uh, Dr. Salins and the board. Thank you for having us this evening. It's been a pleasure to get to uh, know and support your community more closely um, through this um, recent engagement. Uh, we've had the opportunity to um, bring alongside one of our, our top associates here, uh, Jacob Weinfeld, whose uh, parents live here in the community. And so we just wanted to give you a brief update on how the work has been going uh, for the past year or so. Uh, just briefly, uh, who we are, uh, Four Point is a national advisory group that is based here in Maryland, uh, founded by former Assistant Secretary of Education and former State uh, Board of Education Chair. Uh, my name is Dr. Rudy Ruiz. I'm Vice President of Four Point, uh, formerly Chief Education Officer for the Maryland Business Roundtable for Education, um, and really grateful that we had the opportunity to uh, bring Jake alongside uh, your community to advance this important work of making sure that young people um, have extended learning opportunities um, throughout the year. Uh, we are doing additional work in other parts of Maryland, uh, including uh, your Eastern Shore neighbors in Carolyn County. And so really uh, grateful to be able to bring our experience both uh, here in Maryland and from elsewhere uh, to bear to help advance uh, your community's uh, goals, strategic plan, and in your communities uh, aligned with your community's values. I'm gonna give Jake the opportunity to share a little bit more about this work. Uh, you all have uh, selected us, we're grateful for that. And the focus of this work has been around uh, innovative uh, approaches to education and also reimagining the use of time and thinking about time holistically uh, across the student's experience. Thanks, Rudy. Um, really, the foundation of our work has been focused on sustainability of key initiatives that are happening here in Queen Anne's County, with a focus on strengthening and sustaining the ecosystem of out-of-school time programs, and also focused on career and technical education. Um, through our Maryland Leads project, we have met with like 30 plus OST stakeholders to develop a comprehensive understanding of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to out of school time programming in the district. Um, and recently have really focused on how do we sustain and strengthen PFY amidst um, the, the fact that the district has decided that directly managing PFY programming is not a sustainable model. And so what we're working on is supporting the transition of these amazing programs that have great value to the community to key partners who we've identified and are working to build capacity with. Um, so quickly, you know, this one, many program, many districts across the uh, state and across the country partner with other programs to manage OST programs. And that can be a model that has less burden on district staffing and leads to more financial sustainability. So we just want to um, remind that there's these two arms of PFY programming. One is the 21st Century Community Learning Centers program, and then one is the Menu School programs. So the scope of the CCLC program is focusing on our three 
three Title I elementary schools, and the scope of the menu school programming is focused on two other elementary schools and then all four of our middle school programs. So where we are now is we're supporting the Boys and Girls Club, who you'll hear for, from in one moment in applying as the lead agency for the 21st Century Community Learning Centers grant. And then we're working to hopefully transition the management of the menu school programming um, to the EDGE, a trusted OST partner in the area. And we're right now working with the local management board in hopes of increasing the amount of funding that goes to the uh, uh, PFY menu school program because that's what it's going to take for that model to be sustainable. Um, so just briefly want to emphasize that the the role of these new program or these new organizations as lead agencies for PFY is recruiting, hiring, training staff, overseeing the budget, student recruitment, ensuring quality, uh, whereas the role of the school district in this new model would be continuing to donate programmatic space um, in an in-kind way, establishing data sharing agreements aligned with FERPA requirements, and then supporting kind of staff engagement and the oversight of these programs. And then finally, um, our role through this MD Leads grant is to just build capacity around what this new model will look like um, and what we've uh, what we're working to support the development of is like a steering committee which would allow the district to maintain kind of some oversight of these programs uh, and and give them the support that they need to be successful so we're happy to transition right into Derek sharing more about the Boys and Girls Club unless there's any questions well, the question I got was a little bit for you and maybe to Dr. Salins. We had this dumped on us in the beginning of the year. Right. Yeah. That was because of some mismanagement by another organization, yes. which put us in an uncomfortable position, but yes. it needed to be done. Uh, we, I mean, this is something that's sustainable that because yes. I think, you know, when it went from a good program, it's still a good program, to where we had a problem, right. and you lose some, some, some transparency there where people lose confidence, I think. Yes, the, the bottom line is that we don't have enough money um, allocated from the local management board. They give us um, over $100,000, which is great money, but it's not enough money to run the program in the way that we would want to run it. Um, and through the years, there were other opportunities to get grants out there that we ha that have gone away. So we can't just run it with that single part. It has to have other arms to it. And so we were actually grateful to have a partner that can kind of be the outside and organize that and pull it off of our plate and make it sustainable. So that's really their job. Their job is to organize the community in an aspect of who can they partner with and who can we partner with in the community. They're gonna organize that for us. And how can we get additional funding to make that sustainable? So really, it, it kind of reminds me of like the Parks and Rec model, where Parks and Rec literally come in, they use our facility, they're a part of our community, we support them as best we can, but they really are self-sustaining themselves. We're not paying, you know, we're not paying for them. And so it, it's kind of that concept. So they, they've done the big heavy lift here, and as you can see, um, kind of going out and meeting with different partners and seeing what would be a good fit, how can we get programming to students, um, outside of the regular school day in a successful way that's sustainable um, because we just simply can't do it anymore. So, yeah. Do you feel comfortable you'll get enough support from the community and, learn, I mean, I guess you're just getting into this now, but to support this in a, in a positive way? Yeah, I, I think that um, our role, you know, is really around building, building. capacity yes. around this transition. I think, frankly, what we've communicated to the local management board in partnership with the EDGE is that it will take the local management board increasing their funding from $100,000, <coughs> which is what they've contributed to PFY in the past, to $200,000 in order for this to be a sustainable model. That's their total OST allocation, which in the past has been divided up amongst different programs, and that is actively under consideration by them. So I think it will take them making the decision to contribute that amount for the PFY menu piece to be a sustainable model for the edge. So the 21st century piece is like a separate piece altogether. So we kind of have two buckets going on here. The 21st century piece, we have traditionally applied for that grant, and we've managed that grant 
and deliver those services. Um, and that's where you're going to hear from the Boys and Girls Club because they are going to actively pursue that grant and manage that grant, but use our facilities to deliver their services. So we can, that's probably a good transition time right now to kind of transition right into Boys and Girls Club so you can hear that kind of other side of the bucket. Well, I have a couple in, yeah. things. So I've received a lot of feedback from PFY staff and also parents on this. So um, one of the things I went to take away when you said the district has decided to do away with PFY, I just want everybody watching and out there to know that we as a board did not decide that. We did not vote on that. I've got a lot in the feedback that we decided to go away with PFY. We did not that was not a board decision. So I also find it concerning that we've had a program that has been running for almost three decades and, and it's not towards you guys, but now we can't sustain it. And I've heard, you know, it's not the time or place to bring up why it's not sustainable or things that have happened in the past. It's just, you know, there's a lot of kids that rely on this, um, you know, for a safe environment and an educational environment. And I just hope that if this is the decision to go with that that's going to be able to still be provided because that's you know that, that's the, the whole purpose of this we contracted with them through leads money for them to help us to build a sustainable model because it's not anywhere in our budget there's no line item in our budget for after school programming and 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 so we've always done after school programming through a series of grants and all those grants dried up just like the grant cliff that we're in right now um, from Leeds money, money and from Esther money, there's a cliff. So, so grants run out, um, but we don't have the sustainability to add a line item to put that into our operating <coughs> budget. And that's why they're aggressively working with the local management board to say, hey, you've been funding this, but can you increase that so we can continue these services? No one at all doubts that these programs are amazing for our kids. And that's why they stepped up to the plate and said, hey, let us help you to go out and do all the footwork out there to try to build sustainability in your community so that we don't constantly say we can't pay for this, we can't pay for this, we can't pay for this, or we have to cut that. And so that's what they've done. Um, well, if again, we couldn't get, like they just said the local management board, we need an extra 100,000 for them. If we couldn't get that now, then what, how are we gonna get that to continue? So we've, um, we've actively made the case to them. So we, we went to the local management board. Uh, doc, Dr. Sprinkle, the assistant superintendent, was, was our point person. We were working really closely with her and have continued to work closely with many team members since her departure. So we first went, um, well, we've been in constant communication with them throughout this project. We went to them and advocated for this originally um, in mid-March. We just delivered a presentation to their OST committee um, on Monday, and then we're uh, making a presentation to their entire committee on um, on April 17th. So this is actively being considered uh, by them. And I think the point we're making to them is this is what it's gonna take to sustain this program. I think, frankly, if they do not make this decision, then we have to we're here to support looking at a different model, but what we're proposing here related to the menu schools will only work if the local management board makes the decision to contribute their full 200K that they have allocated to OST to sustaining this program. To Dr. Salen's point, 21st century is a different thing. There's a distinct funding source from that. The Boys and Girls Club is actively working on putting a great grant together there. And I think from our perspective as your um, partner in figuring this out. We feel great about the path forward with 21st CCLC, but I think if the local management board does not make this decision to increase, then we're going to have to figure out an alternative strategy, and we're here to do that, but we're, um, we're working towards what we want to happen uh, right now. I, I guess, I, I mean, I'm for this. I think it's a great project. I think it's a great thing to have, but we need to know and just cannot come in September and say it's not going to operate. You know, and I think that was a problem we had this year. Mm -hmm. What are our benchmarks of when you're going to find out the funding from local management board? Yeah. This going to happen. This going. You know, is it going to be June the first, July the first? Because yeah. if it's not going to happen, I don't want to hear that. But I'd, I'd rather hear it and know and how direct it from there than all of a sudden find out in September. Oh, we couldn't get this done. That can, that does concern me. Yeah, absolutely. And so, this do you have benchmarks? I, I think we. Our benchmark is ASAP. You know, we, we want to figure this out um, really immediately. What I can assure is that we'll provide an update coming out of that 417 meeting. Um, so, uh, and, and I think 
what what we've talked about with um, the director of the Edge is just the desire to figure this out really by by May. We want to we want an answer on this before the end of the school year. Um, you know our our work uh, has a few more months left, and we want to turn over a, a plan of exactly what this is going to look like next year to you all, and um, and support not a gray area, but like exactly what the next steps are going to be uh, so, so we don't end up in a similar situation. So just to situation. clarify again, that, that these gentlemen are paid through our leads money, for out, leads money for out of school time. And so their time is limited because those funds fall off in September. So um, so that's why they're, they're like, we need to have, they want to have this all wrapped up with a bow on it before their time is, is finished with us. Well, this I mean, is, I'm sorry. can we, I mean, what I'm asking, we have a board meeting May the 1st. Can we get an update information sure. then? Absolutely. And then we have a board meeting in June. Yes. And I think by those two dates, we need to be close to the finish line to find out where we're going to be. Absolutely. That's well, yeah, very doable. Now you were saying April 17th, you're meeting with them again. Is this to make for them to make a decision? Because hey, you've already presented to the local management board. We, we've pre right? Yeah, we've presented to um, the out of school time committee. I I think in this moment, I can't okay. assure, because I guess it's up to them. We're pushing them to make a decision on that date, but they have not said for sure that that will be the decision date, but I think they definitely understand the urgency of making a decision very soon. Uh, because that's what we need to align staff uh, partners around programming for students next year. So the EDGE, is that going to be doing most of your programming other than the... So, so the PFY Menu School would be managed by the EDGE as the administrative backbone. The goal, though, is to continue to hire the amazing teachers who have led theater programming, sports program, robotics, and other programming through PFY in the past. Um, the EDGE would just be the lead agency who's uh, responsible for enrolling students, hiring and paying teachers, but we're not looking to, we're looking to sustain the teachers who are doing the great programming that's happening now. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So the boys and girls, so we're not, yes. yeah, okay. Yeah, no, we're not no, no, quite no. finished no. with that whole. Yep, you can, yeah. yes, yes, we are ready for All right. boys and girls club. I'll make mine quick. <laughs> uh, I would run through the slideshow, but uh, you mind if I stand? I have a pinch nerve, so. Um, uh, boys and girls clubs have over 160 plus years of youth development um, programs. Uh, we are a national organization. We're a federated model, so Boys and Girls Clubs of America is sort of our mothership, if you would. Uh, but each of our organizations are autonomous. Uh, how am I standing here today? Well, back in 2020, the Hogan administration saw that there was a massive need for youth development throughout the state of Maryland. At the time, we had eight organizations that were serving 10 counties. Our organization was serving two of them. They uh, influx resources to Boys and Girls Clubs throughout the state so that we could grow our programs. We are now in 21 out of 23 districts, uh, and our organization is overseeing uh, the, the programs in three, what will be four, uh, with 21st Century CCLC. Uh, we already went ahead and used the resources at our disposal to put our Boys and Girls Club programs into uh, Queen Anne's County Public Schools, in particular Title I schools and elementary schools. Um, and that is what we intend to do and continue to build off of uh, by taking over as lead agency uh, when they were, uh, for, for the 21st century. Um, we're already seeing great success in our programs. Uh, our programs are historically phenomenal. Uh, they, as I mentioned, are evidence-based, everything from STEM to character and leadership development, health and life skills, arts and sciences, academic supports. We are the one-stop shop for all things youth development. We do serve kids six through 18 in traditional clubhouses, but we also have varying models, and this model in particular would focus our, our time and our resources on elementary age youth development. Uh, and in particular for kids that need these programs the most, which is why we're targeting the 21st century, I'm sorry, why we're targeting Title I schools. Um, our intention is to uh, have the uh, application complete in the next week and a half. We're over 90% there. 
Uh, we have a phenomenal grant writer that's working on it who's already very familiar with the Queen Anne's County 21st Century, 20, uh, 21st Century CCLC, uh, and that is supported uh, by the backbone of Boys and Girls Clubs of America who have a litany of experience with 21st Century in the 50 states that Boys and Girls Clubs occupy. So we're very confident, very excited about this opportunity to bring Boys and Girls Club branded uh, programs into the county and into the schools and into the, the lives of the kids that we know need it the most. Okay, any questions, comments? So I have a question for Dr. Salent. Mm -hmm. The staff that they bring on board, we are running them through our security backgrounds and such since they will be with our students. They are gonna work with our kids. They're gonna background yes just want to make sure so in other 21st century programs we're operating in Hartford County and Cecil County and various places throughout Maryland not only do they background check through the school system but we actually background check ourselves through our own uh, programs and without question the school systems uh, a very rigorous background check but we're darn close uh, to, to matching that that fabulous rigorousness yeah. <laughs> anything else I have two questions. So the first one would be for the EDGE and Boys and Girls Club. How are they working staffing? Um, it, it will be strictly their staff or we're still gonna use our staff that we've used? So they would be employed by Boys and Girls Club, um, but our intention is to continue, if it's not broke, let's, let's keep it rolling. Um, so we would want to keep the existing staff uh, when and wherever possible. Also understanding that opportunities for efficiency to expand programs to hopefully not just be school year, but also summer, if it's possible, um, that would be ideal. So where we can find efficiencies, we will. Uh, however, the intention is to keep familiarity uh, because it's that much harder to build trust if that's not already there. So we've already been in discussions with existing uh, staff that run the PFY program at those 21st century programs who have expressed a desire to continue. Okay, and then my next question was for the um, 20, 21st century schools and then also the menu schools. What will be the cost to families? Zero dollars. Okay, so there are- I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer on menu schools. Okay. I can only tell you Boys and Girls Club, our, our programs will be zero dollars for parents. I, I can say Thank that the, um, the intention right now and what's built into the budget that we've presented to the local management board is to keep costs consistent for the menu school programming at $80 and free for students from free and reduced meal backgrounds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Fabulous. I have a question just about the programming for the Boys and Girls Club. Yes, ma'am. Who, um, when you've got your program, I know that we frequently look at um, like PowerPoint 2.0 and 3.0 as you, as you progress. So how often do you look at your programming and see if those are still best practices or are they? Yeah, that's the great thing about being a federated model. Uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of America is constantly churning through our programs and making sure that they're updated to relevant mm -hmm. needs, uh, specific to communities, specific to trends, specific to even like futurist uh, casting, right? So what we see coming down the line. Um, so it's done very frequently. Happily, I don't have to undertake that. Uh, but we do uh, work very closely with Boys and Girls Clubs of America to uh, inform that decision making uh, through area councils and area alliances. Um, so they get directly information from the communities that Boys and Girls Clubs are in. But I don't have to do the actual uh, research. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. All right. Everside merger with Dr. Sims. Yes, I just wanted to <coughs> formally put this out there. We will have an um, internal news release go out tomorrow um, stating the uh, merger between Everside Health and Marathon Health. Um, this is a positive thing for us. I, I want to make sure that we clarify um, that it is a positive thing because all of the centers that are current um, marathon centers now we have access to. So when you're traveling, and you come across a marathon center, um, that will be one and the same as Everside. And so we actually are broadening our opportunities to access healthcare outside of our district. Um, what does it mean for our own center that we have here? They're just gonna have a facelift to their logo as the bottom line. Nothing, they just put absolutely, up last year. <laughs> yeah, that they just put up. Absolutely nothing will change. There will be no staffing changes, no practices that will change. Their hours remain the same, their overall model of care is remaining the same. 
Um, it talks a little bit about in the news release that, that the vision and mission of Marathon very much mirrored Everside, and so that's why this was such a good fit. And so it's, it's exciting. I know that we've all grown to love Everside because it, you know what I mean? It's just rolls off your tongue. We've gotten used to it um, and, and, and their logo, but we'll adopt quickly to a new Marathon logo and move forward um, with greater opportunities to access healthcare and not a single change to our center besides the sign that hangs on the outside. No so, financial change. No financial change. No, no change to how they make appointments. There's absolutely no change. It'll be as seamless um, as any other merger can be, but you know, um, it will, I, I'm confident that um, we'll not see any major changes. Here. Yeah, so I awesome. just wanna make sure, I know it's a, when someone sees a merger, I know they get very nervous, so I wanna make sure everybody knows that. There yeah, because you know, we've no, met the leaders this, of Everside and yes. you know, the heads and, and, and kind of built that relationship. Yes, and, so will and they they've stay? merged their board okay. together. Um, they've merged their boards together, so we're still meeting with the same folks that we've always met with, um, with some added partners there, um, and they've continued to be great. We still have our monthly meetings. We talk about um, where we are um, with the care, and um, we evaluate um, all the feedback that we get. You know, So if you go in and take a survey, we get to evaluate all that feedback, and we're still seeing some great success, and I know that we'll continue to see the same level of success and care. So no worries. Mm -hmm. the, one, the one question I have, was this letter put out, did they send this to us or how did? We, we partnered with the county, um, with Beverly, to be able to create this news release. I believe the county has already sent theirs out to their folks. This will go out tomorrow. I just wanted the board to see it it's, tonight and I wanted to make it public. Yeah. My only thing is, and I'll probably read into it too much, but I look at the last paragraph, mm -hmm. it says Marathon Health does not expect mm -hmm. any immediate impact on day-to-day -day health. When I see that, they're saying, okay, it's yeah. not going to change right now, mm -hmm. but we could have later. change in the future. Mm -hmm. That just, and especially when I look up farther, it says in, in bold print, it's not going to change. Well, that's what I added to this because okay. I wanted to make sure people knew that I've sat down with the board and, and said, these are the things, these are the non-negotiables that Beverly and I have said, that there will be no staffing changes, our practices and our overall care model will not change. And they have guaranteed us that that absolutely will not change. Um, we do, please remember that we do have a contract with them um, distinctly that talks about the day to day. And so they can't arbitrarily change anything because we have a contract. We would have to mutually agree to change a contract. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a very positive. I mean, I've had nothing but positive things. Mm -hmm. with, very positive. You know, from county people and, and, and our people saying it's a, you know, it's a, it, a great asset. Yes, 100%. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Any other thank you. Comments, questions? For the clarification no. questions. Okay, Dr. Kibler. Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. So I am um, here sort of pinch hitting tonight for two folks to present a couple first reads on policies. The first is um, an update to the charter school policy. Um, as you review the policy, what you'll really notice just from the last time the policy has come to you all, there's just been some some changes in, in Maryland state law that we've made updates to and, and just some dates and and, and things. Um, so nothing nothing major in the policy in general, mm -hmm. but this is just a state mandated policy that, that you all have um, for oversight of charter schools and the process if somebody would want to try to start one. I've, I've had some people ask me that I thought would know the answer, but they've asked me for the answer, which I don't understand correctly. A person that goes to, is homeschooled, does not participate in our sports program or our dual enrollment program because they're not in our school system. That's, that's correct. Would that be the same effect as a charter school too? Um, I would have to verify that, but I, I don't think, I think that the charter school under this policy, they, they are an extension of our public schools, so they would be able to participate. They would be able to then. Okay. It's different in homeschool. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a private school. Yeah, no. this would be a public charter. No, no with what this policy is, it's a public charter school. That's basically an extension, and I, I guess they would get they, a new school number. and. Yeah, and they actually take part of our funding to support their students. So they... But the, okay, when we get state and county funding for a student, 
they would get they would Part take of it. they would, they would take that all of it per, per student seventy right. per student there you go we, like, it's not all of it depends on what student it is because if they are an English language learner if they're a special education child they get a flat fee in the beginning and then they get add-ons for if the children have additional mm -hmm. needs that would require additional staffing and such and, and the way the reporting is going in the state now uh, we are going to have to prove that up to seven well at, at a minimum 75 percent of the funding per student follows that student to the school right. so under this policy we would be able to retain 25 percent of those uh funds for that student that's at the charter school because yeah, i mean we have costs for that exactly I mean, if they're part of our system yeah because I mean, we're still administering the whole and we have this, this sports and dual enrollment to cost yes okay This and everything the the policies for the county they all come from the state so everything's exactly the same like is the county allowed to make their own policies at all on charter so, schools so so we basically have to have a and and mr bell who i'm doing this for he's the charter school guy so any question i don't feel comfortable i oh, bring fine. him back next time but we have to have a policy on charter schools that's what this is the bigger thing that we have the ability to do is set an application for charter schools that's not part of the policy and that is something that we've updated it's gone through msde i believe our legal counsel has read the updates to the uh, charter school application as well that's kind of where we have more of the local control over the makeup of the charter school the policy itself is pretty standard okay thank you does thank that you. answer your question yes <laughs> All right, thank you. Next is the uh, policy 642. Great. Uh, so this, and again, I guess I should have let off, just as a reminder, we've got the four year rotation of policy review calendar so that, you know, we're just getting to the end of the year. We're kind of the last set of them this month um, of what we expected, at least they can pop up anytime. But this is uh, updates to our test administration and dissemination of test data policy. Really, there, there are not a lot of new updates and like changes to the policy other than just all the changes that have happened um, to the types of tests that we're administering in the state of Maryland since the last time this this came to you uh, to be reviewed. So we used to have park testing, now we have MCAP testing. And so what you'll see when you go through the policy and look at the red lines, we're basically swapping out park for MCAP, adding new definitions for what the MCAP is and, and uh, things of that nature happy to take any questions on this one too but as far as these two go just pretty standard updates any questions mm -hmm. all right. thank you very much yep. dr kibler all right we've got uh mr evans for policy 508 good evening president bennett Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, supervisor of student services. Before you tonight are three first read policies, the first being the behavior threat assessment, number 508. There was one uh, minor change we made in that policy. I just had one comment on it. There, just in, uh, in the purpose, it's very easy to make. There was just a typo. The fourth line up from the bottom, it says intention to carry. I'm assuming it meant to carry instead of T. Which line was that? Fourth line up from the bottom on the purpose. It says the ability slash intention. Uh, got it, yes. Okay. We will revise that. I know it's so easy to skip through those. Other questions? Thank you. Next. The next policy is the student discipline policy modeled after the Maryland State Guidelines. This is policy number 511. Uh, some of the revisions, as you can see, really we uh, took out the, the parent definitions because it wasn't all inclusive and really um, just current law state and federal law is is what we follow when we're uh, addressing for for example um uh, mckinney vento homeless you know you, there may be an unaccompanied youth and, and and they wouldn't fit any of those definitions that that adult that might be caring for that child so we thought it best that we just take that out okay any questions 
Thank you. And the last first read policy is illness at school. The original policy was from 1993. It was one sentence. We, we did have our uh, school health supervisor uh, create this based on Maryland guidelines with school nursing. So really that's completely new as compared to the 1993 policy. Um, so you did say you you did work in conjunction with yes Michelle. with okay, yes, I was yes. Reading it, so she okay. in conjunction she wrote this she, <laughs> <laughs> in conjunction she wrote it was quite interesting <laughs> when I switched to the older one where it, yeah it just said if you're sick stay home <laughs> okay so a nice update yes thank you any questions <coughs> no but can we go back to the <clears throat> school discipline um, you took out the definition for parent and there's like six sub definitions caregiver or guardian or or examples of what the parent is have we taken out parent and any other it it's not policies? defined in, in other policies that i know of right and what federal and state law are we looking at well the federal law would be the mckinney vento like i said that it doesn't include an unaccompanied homeless youth which which would not fit any of these definitions here Okay, that, that's fine. I'm not sure if it makes sense if there's one category of youth that it doesn't fit the definition well, of I, a parent. Why would you take out the defini definition of parent <laughs> out of the policy? So we did form a committee of um, administrators at, at all levels, and, and it really was decided. It was more, I'm giving you that example, but I believe there was more examples too where it necessarily would not fit. It would be difficult to truly define every situation. Okay, but you're just trying to define what a parent is, right? And right. so, uh, all right, that's fine. I'll have some questions and I can pass them through the Absolutely. superintendent. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dr. Kibler for second reads. I don't think I saw any changes in these from our first reads, did I? In uh, no, we did have public comment on the two field trip policies okay. that I'll go over. Uh, the first one, I, I was gonna say the county owned textbooks and materials, Dr. Sprenkel um, presented this and, and there has been no public comment and I don't recall you all having any questions at last board meeting. So there have been no changes to this one. The only thing, I textbooks and materials, where's computers fall in? Does that fall into either one of these? Um, I would have to verify that, that I, I guess what I, we I have a technology policy as okay. well. I'd have to verify if that covers. covers when we hand those out. I just, I mean, well, I'm more looking at liability. Sure. Uh, you know, when we're talking a textbook and you, you uh, depreciate it over three years, it's down to nothing. A computer that's valued at three hundred dollars, that's gonna have a five-year longevity, might have more value to it. That's all I'm thinking. Sure. And they si they sign a contract on the computers as well. Oh, do they? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Sorry. I'm glad oh, you no, said that. No, no, it's a good question. It's a good question. Because yeah, I also did have one question about the student. We had talked about this last time. The student obligations must be met upon graduation to return. Who checks that? Like, who makes sure that the student is well, responsible? They check. individual school. <laughs> they check. We had schools. a lot of kids Thank that uh, had to pay fines before they could graduate. That's so. why they don't get to the diploma in their thing. That's right. I was not one of them, but I know. I said, why did you know this so Because well? there were a couple of people that were standing in All line right. trying to pay. Thank you. At, at my former institution, if you walked across the stage and got back to your seat and you had an empty tube, it meant you had to see somebody when... <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. So they, when they I graduated, knew, we never got... You, you got a blank... That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. We, blank and then yeah. It was we can like, get this. Yeah. We, still, we still do the blank. Mm. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Like, they hand out up there. They have to go get their packet. Because right. um, a lot of them get awards and other things too. But um, but also it would be very difficult to, if somebody wasn't in line, right, or whatever, and they got the wrong one to the get things right. back. So right. we, we give them the cover, and then they have to mm -hmm. come get it, and then they can put it in the cover whenever they want. <laughs> okay. And you said there were public comments on both of these? The field yeah, trips and, overnight? And I, I do... I, we appreciate the comment. I didn't make the updates yet. Wanted to share them with you all. Um, they're more kind of under that. Your policy on policy says subject to revision kind of on style, grammar, style, and format. So the first one on just 618, the field trips, the comment um, was that 
students that have a medical diagnosis that requires supervision or intervention must have either a parent slash family member attend. Really the word either doesn't need to be there because it's already saying parent or, so I would agree with that and I think you all probably would too. So that that's the recommended change there. Okay. So we can make that if everybody's okay with that. Sure. It'll come for a vote sure. next mm -hmm. time. But we do appreciate the comment and people looking at them. I know that's something you always bring up. <laughs> And then is, um, on the overnight field trips as well, I, I think this one, this public comment maybe um, warrants a little bit of a discussion under the definitions. Um, overnight field trip, any school sponsored trip that results in students being away from their school location between the hours of 12 midnight and 6 a.m. This does not include late returning athletic trips. And the public comment with this was frankly is just saying late ath late returning athletic trips too restrictive should that definition be expanded for like band or something like that yeah um and yeah and that's something i have not been able to talk with the team yet but we got that um for example this person said i think one morning um, a middle school band is leaving at like 5 45 a.m mm -hmm. so based on the policy that would be called a overnight overnight trip, trip where it's right. really not so I think we should look into that before we bring it back to you for a vote well, um, a good, next a month. Good it's a good yeah. catch, mm -hmm. very, good. very good catch. So we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. At least they're looking exciting. and paying I know, attention. That is I exciting. like that part. <laughs> I like that. Exciting in policy world, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Gast, our wonderful new financial <laughs> officer. We love this. Oh, good evening, um, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Bent, Dr. Salings, members of the board and the executive team. I'm Whitney Gast. I'm the CFO, um, and we would like to present to you, or I would like to present to you the executive <coughs> summary for the last month. Any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Well, this board's been very worried over the last couple months on mm -hmm. how we're going to our end, because healthcare was our big elephant in the room with a few other things. I see 2.2 left over. Does it look, I mean, as far as available balance? And I know there's encumbered things, and there's also, you know, other outstanding purchase orders and things that have to. But do we feel confident that we're going to make it through the end of the year? We believe we are. We have, we do have some um, funds in our fund balance that we will most likely use to cover some of those ex like extenuating expenses that we did not budget for correctly. But we feel com we do believe that we will have enough to cover and also I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'd also like to uh, ask the president to put on the agenda or Dr. Salins for next month or two we have a policy for our minimum and maximum fund balance mm -hmm. if we're going to dip below our minimum which I think we are I think that needs to be addressed that I would sit there just speaking right now say it should be least dressed for a year not disregard the policy but uh, wave wave, right. wave it for a, a year for the minimum um, if that's going to be necessary, which I think we all acknowledge over the past, it's going to be. We will be sure to add that to the agenda for next meeting. And so we will bring that as an agenda item to waive that the policy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like two percent, two to five, two to five, two to five. Yeah. So we'd waive the two percent for a year. For, for a, a year. A year. Yeah. Sure. Any other comments, questions about the reports? I'm happy to see we might get through the year. Mm. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's scheduled for a break. Does, that very, does anyone want a break or we want to keep going? Keep going. All right. Next up is uh, can I get a motion to approve the HR report as presented? So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, President Bennett, at this time, I'd like to say thank you for approving um, the HR report as it was presented to you because with that approval, we are excited to welcome on board a new position for Dr. Kibler as Assistant Superintendent for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. All right. I would like to take an opportunity to stand up and get a picture mm -hmm. um, just to say congratulations to him. Sitting over there, when as soon as we get the picture, <laughs> pick up his stuff and move it. <laughs> 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 
think everybody should be in there. Everybody in it, Dr. Kipling? Yes, including no. you. I know. I think bad. I'm the staff. I'm the staff yeah, photographer. <laughs> okay. All right. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank Another bright spot that was. Yes, thank you. <sighs> All right, uh, Mr. Pinder, do you want to just present the four for um, the Bay Area Transportation? And we can, if that's all right with everybody, we can just vote on the Sure, four. sure. Um, uh, good evening, President Bennett, uh, Dr. Salem's board members, executive team for the record. My name is Sid Pinder, Chief Operating Officer. I uh, bring before you tonight a uh, request by Bay Area Transportation. Um, there are four uh, agenda items for approval. The first three are for um, three buses, uh, Mr. Green, Mr. Sherrill, Mr. Clark. All of those buses are 15 years old and can no longer be used. They are seeking to replace them next year. Um, of course, there would be a new PVA for them associated with that. And then the fourth bus is for um, same Bay Area transportation for Mr. Joseph Wheeler to purchase a used bus that would be a non-paid spare with no PVA associated with it. I'm sorry, was that all of <laughs> That was four. Yeah. That was four. Right, I'm so sorry. Okay, That's all right. um, can I get a motion? It was a great presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Recommend that we approve um, the purchase of new buses for the 24-25 school year to replace the aging ones for all four. For Bay Area Transportation. Mm -hmm. for, yes. Budget source FY25 operating budget fiscal impact PVA. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving on. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the next one is from the Northern County LLC. Uh, request to purchase a new bus. Uh, Mr. Aaron Mitchie uh, has uh, this bus is 2615. It has over 300,000 miles. Um, we do have in the contract that if it's over 10 years old, that they can go ahead and replace it if they're experiencing some problems. Over 300,000 miles is pretty excessive use on the oh, bus. Um, it is. Yeah. So seeking to replace that. And you'll find that in the northern part of the county, um, more mileage on the buses. Further to go. Yep, yes, ma'am. Just, a, just okay. a question. Do we try to keep, I mean, it, it sounds like he's run a lot of miles. Do we try to spread that around sometimes or keep some of the, you know, mm. you have somebody going on a high musk, you know, maybe a guy that's only doing 80 to 100 or lady? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Murdoch goes through and analyzes that and tries to rotate some of that up. Or if it's a bus company that has a um, multiple buses, you will see them switch up buses to keep the mileage down on the buses mm -hmm. so that they're not really exceeding it. You know, 300,000 is a good chunk of yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, and I mean, he, if he's running that in, in eight or 10, 10, 11 years and somebody's running only 150, 215, it kind of, yeah. you know, you kind of want to. And then circle. something else to take into account, that's correct, but mm -hmm. also, you know, are they doing any field trips or anything else like that? Sure. And right. on, you know, are they going to the Baltimore Zoo? Those kinds of things. Gotcha. I recommend that we, the board, approve Mr. Aaron Michi to uh, purchase a new bus for the 24 25 school year to replace bus. 2615 budget source FY25 operating budget fiscal impact PVA. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. What? Oh, I should have been paying attention. Where are we at? Okay. 8.08. .08. Yep. Are you we, doing that so one, we've, Mr. Mr. Bear, pardon? Yes, Mr. Pinder's going to present this. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. I, said, I was wondering why, why is he not getting up? No. But okay. <laughs> no worries. I gave Mr. Barraclaw tonight off. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm before you, uh, here before you tonight to seek uh, approval of policy 106, naming or renaming of public schools and school facilities. Um, it has been out there for several reads and there have been no comments or suggestions uh, for this policy. Motion to approve policy 106. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Mr. Pinder. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Seeking approval for policy uh, 250, the DOT drug and alcohol testing. 
Um, this has been out for the uh, informational review, second reading, no, po I'm sorry, no comments um, made, public comments seeking approval for this tonight. Motion to approve policy 250. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Noel, okay. Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, Michael Noll, Director of Human Resources. I come before you tonight with two policies for approval, uh, both of which have been before the county for two months for read. There have been no public comments. So I bring before you policy 410, employee use of social media, and policy 411, employment of educational staff. All right, keep rolling. Motion to approve policy 410. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And motion to adopt policy 411. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Hey, Dr. Salins. Matt and I are actually going to tag team this okay. one together. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. No, we can <laughs> We're gonna tag, tag team. team it together. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So um, we'd like to propose the last day of school. As the board is well aware, we did write a waiver to the state superintendent to ask if our students could be um, waived of the 180-day um, expectation in Comar. We were granted that waiver, so our students uh, only have to go 179 days. As a result of that, students will be able to get out on Friday the 7th as opposed to having to come back a half day on Monday the 10th. So um, we're happy about that. We think that's a, a great move, and and uh, Dr. Kibler has the details of how that falls out in the actual calendar itself. So you can see the news release that kind of just firms up mm -hmm. all the different dates. Um, and we also made a change in um, half day versus... Um, uh, early dismissal. Early dismissal, thank you. <laughs> and um, so we're going just with half day. And so those tiers will look um, a little different than they have um, in the past as we get closer to the end of the school year. Um, we, we typically made the, the change because of high school um, end of year course exams. Um, and the schools have worked diligently to figure out a schedule that they can meet students' needs as it relates to testing and still meet that half day mark. So we don't have to do the early dismissal and have all these different tiers and, and times and different dates out there. So um, we're excited about that as well because we think it'll be more consistent for parents. So you can see though, um, as the news release lays out, um, June 5th now says half day for all schools, tier one, noon, tier two, one. Um, June 6th, half day for all schools, tier one, noon, and um, tier two, one o'clock, and then seventh is also the same, uh, which would be a makeup day for our high school students to make up any final exams that they may have missed on the fifth and the sixth. Um, you also note that on Monday the 10th and June the 11th are professional development opportunities for staff. Um, if you do recall, their contract is 189 days, and um, due to the weather and how our calendar fell out, um, with the students um, not having to go a full 180 days, this gives us the opportunity to have two days with staff. So that, that would be for them their uh, 188th day and their 189th day per their contract. The only question that I have is um, looking at the two tiers for dismissal. Um, is that enough lead time for our buses mm -hmm. to do both a 12 o'clock run and a 1 o'clock yes. run? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. We've worked diligently with um, Sid and John Murdoch to ensure that those times would work. We worked diligently with the, the principals and their instructional staff to make sure that they could make that work for the students. Um, so it was a very collaborative effort to, to get this schedule in place. Gotcha. 
and what with with one change that Dr. Salen is, is talking about with going to the half days versus the early dismissal times, moving forward into next year after working with the high schools, they felt like with what she was talking about with the exams, when we have we'll only ever have the one early dismissal time now, just okay. that half day. We we won't have these. Well, was it a one or a two today right. versus a 12 and one moving forward with making this change and we're updating the 24 25 calendar that it will always be these 12 and one times and just so it would just be it's i think it's just easier for parents yeah. and caregivers um yeah. to just have a very solid schedule yeah, so, yeah. and um it, it took some tweaking to be honest with you but we were able to make it work and the team did a great job kudos to them well done thank you and I guess just a shout out for graduations, May 29th, Queen Anne's County High School, May 30th, Kent Allen High School. We're excited for our seniors. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of waiting for this vote, the board, the state board's waiver to make sort of three big announcements around the calendar that are all captured here. One is that additional May 14th day off for the primary election day that we've all voted on last summer. Um, but again, we want to get that messaging out again, just as another reminder here, the change in the half days as well as the end of the official last day of school. So kind of all three of those things are captured in this in this press release. And we will send out, um, you know, a verbal message to our parents um, just as a reminder as we get to each one of these. I know because the 14th is very different. Right. Um, that wasn't in our calendar. That was something that had to be changed later on out of our control. But um, so we'll, I'll send out a little reminder, you know, prior to that to just say, hey, don't forget that students are not in session on May 14th. So <clears throat> recommend that the board of it. <coughs> I wanted to make sure we were voting and we weren't done. Oh, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Make a motion that the Queen Anne's County Board of Ed approve um, the new calendar date for June 7th, 2024 is the last day of the 23-24 school year. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. All right. All right, let's right. move on with our budget. Are we mm -hmm. Dr. Salins and Ms. Gast? Yes. And Dr. Kigler's Kibler has been an integral part of it, so I've asked him to also participate, if necessary, with any questions. Um, hello. Okay. I'll, I'll oh, just go ahead and jump in real sure, quick, okay. just to say that you know we have had an opportunity to um, collectively meet um, multiple times as it relates to our budget. Uh, we have had the same opportunity to collectively meet with the commissioners um, in open session to be able to share. Um, where we are with our budget. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to our new CFO to walk through what um, will be adopted for this school year based on the budget um, placeholder that the commissioners have provided for us. Um, it's true. So um, right now our budget placeholder, they ex we are expecting the commissioners to give us 5 million over the MO. Yeah. MOE. MOE. <laughs> um, so we have gone through and we've determined where these additional costs will go um, as presented to you in the draft budget seat and where we will take, where we will have to offset with those as well. So we're open for any questions or. Concern. I have a just question. Just okay. where are we taking our funding down? What, what percentage will it be at when we use our fund balance? Our, our fund balance is, 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 like is going to our, our current balance. budget. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. All right. Very highly um, well, likely that we will not have a fund balance. Uh, yeah. I guess I just to elaborate. So, new increases next year. We are getting uh, one million, about one million extra from the state of Maryland. Um, the five million from the county is above what they gave us last year. Uh, their MOE number was actually 800,000, approximately 800,000 less that we, we talked about. So this is actually a $5.8 million um, increase. increase versus what they have to give us by state law. Which is about 7%. Yes. And their revenue um, this year was a 3%. 3%. So this is a very significant increase mm -hmm. over and above, um, you know, nearly $6 million over maintenance of effort. And, um, you know, unfortunately, where we are with the cliff um, mm -hmm. through ESSER funds and um, through Leeds money, 
um, and, and where we are with some of our mandates, such as dual enrollment and um, rising costs in inflation for some of our electricity, heating and air, those types of things. Um, unfortunately, this is gonna result in position elimination. Um, we know that the, we've talked and talked and talked about the, um, you know, the, um, the positions that were tied into the grant. Um, so those, those positions we know, and then this would be above that an additional 53 locally funded positions um, to be able to balance that budget. So how we're getting to that bottom line is through position elimination. One thing I like to say is, you know, we're 850,000 maintenance effort less than last year if they want to go strictly by maintenance effort. Yeah. But that has it's something to do- 835,000. 835,000. Yeah. Yes, but that also has something to do with uh, COVID when we were you know, rolling averages and stuff. So they've, you know, they've mm -hmm. come back to adjust it this year. So we've hit a, a real double whammy on that one. We did. Uh, I give the uh, commissioners credit, they're sucking it up and not, Absolutely. not penalize us for it. But due to the calculations of the state, which they didn't suck it up and do anything, uh, you know, it's a big, it's a big it's number. A big deal, because we were uh, our enrollment was actually up 62 students, which right. is significant. So you, when people hear our enrollment's up, why is our main up down? It's exactly. because of it's because, because of, of that. I think people need to know. That. That's very true. Another couple things we have: we got the blueprint, which yes. is, is salary oh, has to be hit us hard. Storm. Our insurance, I don't know what it's it's out of hand. We that's the problem we've had with this year's budget. We've adjusted it for this year. You can see a, a, a major increase of 3.3 million dollars. Um, and that's it's not it's not sustainable in the future. It won't mm -hmm. it won't be if we plan to do what we are going to do now. The, the, and the other thing is when we talk about people being let go, leads grants and S are all hit us this year, mm -hmm. which we knew this was coming. And mm -hmm. and it was a great thing to have, but once you don't have it funded, there's there's no way we can do it. So, I think this is a good budget. I mean, you know, one side says five million. The county producing 5.8 million more than necessary is a lot of money, but when you go down anything by item by item, I mean, it's pretty well, I mean, we spent some time, and I know the board has looked at this over different things, and we can do all we want about saving electricity and fuel, it's still going up. I mean, we might use less, but everything at the price goes up. I mean, it's just, it's it's got to stop somewhere. I mean, you, you, it's just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you look at our major categories here, uh, you know, I mean, when the state only comes up with a million dollars, more, uh, it's kind of disheartening. It, you know, it is with all the with the blueprint, which yes. Dr. Kibler knows about, and <laughs> you know tells us all the time. You know they say do this, do this, and you know but where's the funding for all this stuff? Yeah. It's coming from it's coming from our classrooms, and that's where it's going to start hurting. And I think it's going to start hurting very shortly in our classrooms. I wanted to clarify the health insurance rate placeholder. The reason that it's 3.3 million is because we expect a six to eight percent increase, but we also <clears throat> underestimated this right. current school year. So we have to make up for that, mm -hmm. um, that underestimation. So half of that is where we didn't estimate enough. And that's why our budget is having concerns right now as we move towards the last few months of school because of that underestimation and those health increase rates. Um, but what's our health? In there, isn't that a $14 million? Or $6 million. A $14 every, million dollar item. And when you start taking 2%, that's one thing. But when you start taking 8 and 10 and 16% on right. $14 million, right. you know, right. the percentage doesn't bother as much as what, what you're applying right. it to. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, and it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's I know it's, I know it's concerning for us. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the other things that you do see in here are things that we don't have any choice to do. So when you look at and see MABE insurance, workman's compensation, or MABE insurance property and liability, um, dues for different organizations, heating and oil, electricity, water and sewer. These are all things we don't have a choice. We Correct. can't just say, hey, we're gonna, we're not gonna pay that or we're not gonna budget for that. Um, these are all things that we, we have to budget for. So um, that's why, unfortunately, um, in order to get to that, that bottom line, to balance that budget, we have to have those position elimination. As a person that was just appointed the new assistant superintendent and the other thing we we are committing to is no new textbooks next year half a million dollars yes, right. pausing on that for a year and, and that's going to hurt and we can't do that every year but oh. we're trying to do it one year to eliminate or you know to help out with the position elimination mm -hmm. well, well but give kudos to the team because i mean we have hit the perfect storm between the the grants going away and the blueprint which was no funding um, and the health insurance, every million, you know, each time it goes up, it's another million dollars. Uh, 
it's it's quite amazing that we have come up with the budget that we have. Mm -hmm. that it's well, and also, you know, the the county's very been very helpful with our mm -hmm. um, uh, funding for capital projects. Yep. I mean, you know, we have, yes. you know, I think uh, uh, Sid's been, uh, Mr. Pender's been very good on, you know, keeping us addressed to keep these schools up and the way they should be. Yep. Because, you know, we, we replaced Kent Island High School. We, we replaced, we're getting ready to do Queen Anne's. You know, we're painting schools. And this, you know, it's like a Walmart. We're open 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like your house where you open the door three times a day. I mean, it's a lot of, lot of, lot of activity. And I think uh, it takes a lot to run this stuff. It does. And I think we also need to understand that, you know, the commissioners also support us in many other ways. They support us through parks and recreation. Yeah. They support us through the school resource officers. Um, they support us through even emergency services who does mm. a lot of training for our staff and things like that. They come in, they actually push into classrooms and do lessons with our students in the classroom. So they, they support our libraries. I mean, mm -hmm. I could go on and on. So, you know, while this budget placeholder isn't exactly what we need to move forward and do everything that we did this past year, um, I think that it's very, very reasonable um, in the aspect that um, we sit at the table with all different partners of this community and a 7% increase is significant. Mm -hmm. Yes. When does this go to the county? So the county already has um, this outline and understand, we've met with them publicly. Um, they won't strike their budget, so we won't know exactly until they have concluded their three budget um, public hearings. Yeah. So they'll do three public hearings and I encourage people to go um, and listen and participate. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they basically do one at either they do end. They do one, one in Stevensville, yeah. one in Centerville. That could be constant yield night and then do one in Sellersville. And and one in Sellersville. Be Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I don't know the exact dates, but it's in May. Yeah, they're in May. And so I encourage people to go out and um, and just be engaged and participate. Yep. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, I uh, recommend that the board approve the budget for the 2024-2025 school year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, it's time for citizen participation. Has anybody signed up, Ms. Beth? No. Okay. Future meetings. Uh, we have our next meeting will be a regular board session on the 1st of May. Right? Is that? That's right. Yes. Make, okay. Can, that pardon? We're, we're canceling. Yes, we're canceling our second. We have nothing for the agenda for April 24th, so our next one will be the 1st of May. It'll be a regular board session. And can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.